Hi, I am Olivia and you are on the channel Profits and Wealth. Today I want to speak as the title is about the collapse, the truth about the collapse of Africa. And you know, being a South African who lives on this beautiful, amazing continent called Africa, we always knew that somehow something was off. We blamed our leaders, to which at some extent, the perception and the picture that they created was that they are corrupt and that they don't have a vision, they don't care about us. And the way that a lot of them, my own country's political leaders included, the way that they have conducted themselves, it affirms it and it affirmed our perception as citizens of on the African continent, it affirmed their perceptions. But we also knew that the West played a role on the way our countries have turned out. And this belief was confirmed, which, you know, when you seek for the truth, one of the most difficult things is to accept it and to see things for what they are. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered just recently a video by Professor Nicholas Howard. And just as a bit of background on who Professor Nicholas Howard is, because in one of the videos, he said people are very angry at him and rightly so because people don't want to hear the truth. What he says is the truth and it exposes and affirms and confirms what we as Africans, what we have suspected all along. So Dr. Nicholas Howard is an economist and he's a social scientist from the Erasmus University in Rotterdam, Netherlands. Interestingly, Dr. Nicholas Howard is from Sri Lanka. And when you watch the video, you will understand why I say interestingly. He is also a senior lecturer in economics at the International Institute of Social Studies. Dr. Nicholas Howard is an expert. He is being described and hailed as an expert in the following fields. Macroeconomics, financial markets, forecasting financial markets, and then financial economics. Before I play the video, I just want to mention something about economics. I've always had a problem with economics because economics is the study of scarcity what normal person or country anywhere in the world and yet this is exactly what they do would study scarcity to remind you as an ordinary citizen that there isn't enough so now this expert of economics, this is the video that I discovered and it has been around for the last seven years, might be longer. I don't know when the lecture happened and this is what he has. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is uh, just give you some <laughs> charts and a couple of tables just to paint a little bit of a picture that you already know. Okay, so what this presentation is fundamentally designed to say is this. Africa historically, Sub-Saharan Africa has been fundamental to the global prosperity of the advanced countries. Okay? And Africa had a role to play. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital 
for the prosperity of everyone else. So let's get clear about that. Okay, and this means all the economic structures, all the global institutions and the economics we teach everyone is all designed to keep Africa exactly where it is. And whether it is Europe or US or now China, it's always the same. We need Africa to be impoverished because we need those raw materials and we need them dirt cheap. Okay, so that's the message. It doesn't mean to say that there's nothing Africans can do. Of course there is. Okay, but this is the opposition that they're fighting. This is what it's about. Because if Africa does do something different, I assure you living standards of all those in Europe and North America and Asia is going to fall. They are just a few points that I want to highlight on this video. When he talks, when Professor Howard, or Dr. Howard, when he talks about sub-Saharan Africa, he's talking about the lives of a billion people, myself included. The countries in Sub-Saharan Africa as Nigeria, South Africa, Rwanda, Kenya, Ethiopia. Just to give you an idea of what Sub-Saharan Africa is. The raw material that he is referring to that comes from Africa, the raw material that we need, that they need, the West need, China, Russia, everyone else needs it's steel, oil, grain, gas. Remember what's happening in Europe now with the, the war in Ukraine? The Ukrainian-Russian war? There's a huge shortage of gas in Europe and America. And we have it. Gas, coal and minerals. So those are the resources and it's being provided by Africa. And he's saying, Professor Howard is saying that Africa is needed. We don't need the rest of the world as much as they need us. So Africans, we have been crying about colonialism. We have been crying about we how we've been oppressed, enslaved, abused, how things were stolen from us, and Professor Howard just confirmed. So knowing about these things, knowing about the real state of how the, the world views Africa, the question is, what are we going to do about it? as Africans, because we have been liberated. I think South Africa, in 1961, it became a republic. And then it was, un, it was, there was apartheid, not immediately, apartheid was a gradual system. So even though the Brits, the British left, we had to deal with a racist white government as black people. And in 1994, democracy came to South Africa. But it meant nothing. Because we did, like with all the other African countries, we still followed the systems of the West. And those systems have been designed to keep Africa oppressed. Why this continent? Why Africa? So you need to ask this question, if they could do it to Africa, how many other countries do they do the same thing to? How many other countries are paying the price for the greed of the West? 
And when I said, interestingly enough, Professor Howard, or Dr. Howard, is from Sri Lanka. And have you noticed the problems in Sri Lanka? When you look at Pakistan, Bangladesh. So this problem, the economics of this world has not been set up to favor you or any country if you are not part of the West. Now look at the situation of what is happening in Europe and where are they coming to in Africa? As African, and this is a message to our African leaders, you need to get your act together. You need to stand up against this brutality. And you will hear that those who did, they were murdered, they were killed, as written and explained by John Perkins in his book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. man. They want to keep us dependent on them, and yet, they are the ones who need us. So we need a new system that will work for Africa. African systems for African people. For too long, we have followed the way of the West. And I know and I can so would say with certainty, it's not just the African continent. This Latin America, parts of Asia, parts of Europe, because it's only a certain cluster that benefits from these laws and these systems that they put in place. So let's listen to the rest of the video and hear what he has to say. Okay, so what I'm going to do, okay, so that's the message. It doesn't mean to say that there's nothing Africans can do. Of course there is. Okay, but this is the opposition that they're fighting. This is what it's about. Because if Africa does do something different, I assure you living standards of all those in Europe and North America and Asia is going to fall. Okay, and that is a big price to pay. I assure you that the West is not going to allow that without a big fight. Okay, so this is what it's fundamentally about. Uh, what I want to show you is how these structures are operating and why I keep the ideology part there is because we are part of the producers of ideology. At universities and academic institutions we are complicit in this whole enterprise. Okay, so the job of many Western academics is to convince Africans they have to keep doing what they're doing. Okay, and to show them it's your fault that you're poor. It's not our fault. It's your fault that you're poor. You know. So this is what we do in academic institutions, and I, I want to show that as well. We just start. This is what it's basically about. So you you know what it's about. But I want to just show you the extent to which Africa is specialising in the production of raw materials and basic agricultural goods. Um, we know the basic forces that have caused this underdevelopment. We, 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 know, we, know, we know the basic forces that have caused this underdevelopment. We know it's colonization, colonization, colonization. Meaning that with all these vast resources being produced, how much are they getting for it? Nothing, 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 nothing. 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 This is a very significant piece of data. Then I just want to show you what has happened to Sub-Saharan Africa because what we know, what we know and from all studies, no country ever develops without manufacturing. Okay, producing raw materials will not take you anywhere. Producing basic agricultural goods will not take you anywhere. And let's have a look at how much manufacturing activity takes place in Sub-Saharan Africa. We can look over the last 15 odd years, 15, 20 years. 
and we see manufacturing has actually declined. So this figure here is 17% of the total. Most of the rest, when we talk of industry, it includes manufacturing, but the bulk of it is mining. Okay? Raw material extraction. This is the bulk of it. And here we, th we see actually raw material extraction has stayed the same. What has caused industry to fall is the fall in manufacturing production. This is deliberate because we will never, as Western economists, as Western policymakers, we cannot afford to allow Africa to industrialize and start producing manufacturers. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot. We cannot afford to allow Africa to industrialize and start producing manufacturers. Okay, so we will do everything to stop that. We will do everything to stop that. We will do everything to stop that. And I'm going to show you how we actually block that. Sub-Saharan Africa is condemned to this role. Just the supplier of raw materials, not a manufacturer. Okay, so relative to the rest of the world, Sub-Saharan Africa is going to suffer. Again, why? Because it's condemned to this raw material production. This is basically why. How is it condemned to that? Well, the first, the first and most important is the economic structures. After colonization ended, we needed new structures to keep these countries where they were. Okay? And the first of those is aid. Okay? We give them aid. Aid for what? Actually, we give them aid to keep repressive regimes in power. That's all. Okay, we're not giving them aid for much more except to a little bit of infrastructure to make sure those raw materials get to the ports and aren't gotten out of the ground. But for the most part, we give repressive regimes money and power and guns to keep that system going. This is what it's fundamentally about. All the hypocrisy about transparency and democracy and bullshit like that, it's all bullshit. You know? And at least the Chinese don't enter into that bullshit. They say, we don't care about the whole political environment, we just give the money. Okay? And it's for raw material extraction, period. Okay? It's the same with all the other raw materials, you see. We're all benefiting, we're complicit. We're actually complicit in this because we will protest and shout out if the situation ever changed. So, there you have it. You know, to have confirmation of what is really behind the attempts to collapse the economy of Africa. Like Professor Howard rightly says, two things, colonialism and then greedy politicians. He says they designed the econo economic structures to keep Africa in place. And it's not just for Africa. It's for every other continent where they want to exploit and abuse. He says, if the raw material from Africa stops coming, it will impact the lives of, the, of people in the West negatively. And that cannot be allowed. But it's okay for an African child to die of hunger. It's okay for an African child to receive the worst possible education, substandard education. 
It's okay for an African to work for a minimum wage that he cannot or she cannot survive on. It's okay for a lack of infrastructure in some countries. So basically what he is admitting to and confirming like the, that the West, they do not value the life of an African person. But not just an African person. If you go to Latin America, our conditions are the same. They make sure, how did he phrase it? That they give money to keep repressive in regimes in power. And with that, he summed up the problem we have in Africa. If our leaders were less greedy, if they were willing to embrace systems that will work for us as a people, if they can unite and speak with one voice, we don't have to have this kind of conversations. You know, to Professor Howard, it's just a lecture he was giving. It's just raw material. But what he's talking about is my children and their children and their children's children's future. What he's talking about is the billions of lives of my fellow Africans. And don't you think if you are not, if you are a white African on this continent, that this doesn't affect you, it does. This is the answer to the division on our continent. To suspect something and to have a vague idea of something is completely different than to hear it. We cannot escape the truth to the West and everyone else that he mentions, whether it's China or Russia. We are just pawns in the bigger game of greed, power and materials. We are nameless and faceless. We don't have an identity. We are less than nothing when it comes to the West. And our leaders, I mean, I saw a video with the Prime Minister of Canada, of Canada, Justin Trudeau, of the absolute subtle way of how he undermines the Chinese president, who coincidentally, is also on the African continent, together with Russia, wanting our resources, wanting our raw materials. What is the entry to this country? Where are deals made that affect me, my children, my neighbors, my friends, my fellow Africans? Where are the deals made? They're made in Europe, in the West, where we have never been. Our lot, our fate is being decided and we're not even part of the decisions. But we pay the price. We pay the price. Colonialism is an evil. But you have to commend it for how successful it was and still is in destroying the mind of an African person. There's no unity when it comes to us. There's no oneness. We are still fighting for scraps. We are fighting for scraps. And we destroy our countries. We destroy ourselves in the process. As long as my fellow African person do not benefit, I am okay. 
We need to unite. We need to stand together. We need to fight this evil with everything that we have. Violence is not the only way. Violence is something that was taught to us by our colonizers. And I will say that if you don't have the guts to say it. And now we are being portrayed as savages, barbaric. That is how they, they, they portray us like that. And yet, who puts the weapons in our hands? Who? Because they know the sickness of an African is greed. Because we have allowed the filth and the sickness and the greed and the need for power of our colonizers to infect us. He spoke, Professor Howard. Professor Howard mentioned aid, funding, financing, health. <laughs> we all know these words by heart. How many times through the years the West must help? We need help from the West. You see how we as Africans have been indoctrinated by the message of the West that they are here to help. They come with a poison and they pretend that they have the antidote. Hence, they are the ones who are poisoning us slowly. Currently, South Africa has accepted a loan in 2020 at the height of the COVID pandemic of 4.3 billion US dollars. That, six, that was $65 billion, sorry, 65 billion rand in 2020. Our local currency is the rand. They got that from the IMF. It didn't end there. The World Bank also wanted to match the generosity of the IMF, and I'm being sarcastic here. And they gave us a loan of 750 million US dollars. And that is to help with the COVID response. The IMF and the World Bank gave money to a government that has stolen almost, if not more, than a trillion rand from their own citizens. Some reports say that the amount that was stolen from us during state capture, well, not some, it's not even possible to quantify it. And those very same people are still in government. The very same people got that money from the World Bank and the IMF. So Dr. Howard, Dr. Nicholas Howard, as a South African, as an African, I want to say thank you to you for confirming what we know. So my question to Africans is, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to change this oppressive system that we do not understand? How are we going to change the economics, economics of our countries? How are we going to change our education system? As I'm speaking, my government, who never took an interest in education, there's a bill called the Bella Bill, where they now want to decide when you are a homeschooling parent, they want to decide what curriculum your child must follow. They want to decide what you must teach your child and what your child must be exposed to if your child is not 
in the formal schooling system. And just as a background, when it comes to the ratings of maths and reading, South Africa, with every report, is being ranked as the lowest. And the government wants to force parents who are not part of the system, who chose to educate their, sis, their children using international... Oh. See, you can't escape from the systems of Dr. Howard. You can't. But because the systems of America and Britain, because we use the, the Cambridge and the GET, it's popular in South Africa. So now the South African government is saying, screw you. We want you to teach, to learn, and only learn according to the local standards. Even though a lot of those children who have been exposed to the local standards, they cannot do basic maths, and they cannot read, and they cannot read with comprehension. And I bet you that decision of this country to become more involved with the education system. It is to make sure that our children are being brainwashed even more. So what are we going to do about it? Nigeria, Cameroon, Rwanda, Ethiopia, Kenya, Mozambique, Swaziland, Lesotho, Namibia, Zimbabwe. Angola. What are we going to do about it? Because we can cry about colonialism until the day we die. And even for generations to come, it's not going to change a damn thing. You need to stand up. You need to do what is required. On my own, I cannot do much, but together we can. And you know, the perception of South Africa is that we can only protest and then nothing happens. We need to move beyond the protest. We need to open our minds. We need to strengthen our minds, strengthen our outlook. We need to understand the history. We need to understand economics. We need to understand education. Your education cannot just come from an education system. You need to know philosophy. You need to understand science. You need to learn economics. Because by knowing where it comes from, you can change the system. We can no longer accept the label of victims and we can no longer rely on our leaders. And we must stop buying into the perception that Africa is for sale because a human soul, a human heart, a human being is not for sale. We are Africans. We need to take pride in that we need to stand tall and proud and we need to affirm and claim that we are Africans. No matter your race, your culture, your tribe, your country, now is the time to remember that you are an African and you need to go back and return to the ancient traditions of right, of justice, of compassion, and of love for this continent. It is ours. It does not just belong to our leaders. It belongs to us. We need to come together and we need to unite. The same way the systems of the West have been used to oppress, brutalize, kill, and dehumanize us. We need to come up with our own systems to rebuild our economies, to strengthen 
our bonds. To write our own trade agreements that suit us. Not the shadow masters of the West, but who suits our people and who work for us. African solutions for African people. Remember who you are. Not what you've been told, not what you've been fed, not what you've made to believe, but not what you've been made to believe. Go back to your history. Go and discover who you truly are, who you descend from, what the blood in your vein means, who you are connected to. Go and search for that history. Stand in that power. Reclaim your birthright and become proud who you are. I thank you. My name is Olivia and this is the channel Profits and Wealth.